New York, Seoul, the U.S. is ready to resume negotiations with North Korea and has confirmed a goal of denuclearizing the country by January 2021, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said in a Wednesday statement, officially setting a concrete timeline for Pyongyang. Washington is prepared to engage immediately in negotiations to transform U.S. DPRK relations, Pompeo said, using an abbreviation for the North's official name, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. This most recent breakthrough follows South Korean President Moon Jae-in's visit to the North Korean capital, Pyongyang. There, he and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un signed the Pyongyang Joint Declaration, covering a variety of topics from preventing military clashes to bilateral economic projects and the North's nuclear program. Pompeo congratulated the Korean leaders for the successful outcome of their summit and welcomed Kim's decision to permanently dismantle a missile engine test site in front of U.S. and international inspectors. This morning, I invited my counterpart Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho to meet in New York City next week where we are both already scheduled to be in attendance at the United Nations General Assembly meeting, he said. North Korean representatives have also been invited to Vienna to kick off talks with Washington's special envoy to the North, Stephen Begun, at the earliest opportunity. Pompeo said, this will mark the beginning of negotiations to transform U.S. DPRK relations through the process of rapid denuclearization of North Korea, to be completed by January 2021, the secretary said. Pompeo is expected to host a ministerial-level meeting at the UN Security Council on September 27 to discuss U.S. efforts toward North Korea's denuclearization as well as the importance of implementing international sanctions on Pyongyang. Washington has so far maintained a hard line on sanctions throughout the negotiations. South Korean President Moon Jae-in left, and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un waved during a car parade in Pyongyang on September 18. Copyright writers The agreements made at the meeting between Kim and Moon drew an optimistic response from U.S. President Donald Trump. We had very good news from North Korea, South Korea. They met, and we had some great responses, he told reporters at the White House on Wednesday. We're making tremendous progress with respect to North Korea, Trump said. He had taken to Twitter earlier that day, calling the results of Wednesday's meeting very exciting. The last week White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders revealed that the administration was in the process of arranging a second summit between Trump and Kim, to follow up on their June meeting in Singapore. Yet Pyongyang's path to denuclearization remains hazy, as it continues to avoid making substantial commitments. Progress on denuclearization could help Trump politically ahead of the midterm congressional elections in November. Moon will meet with Trump this coming Monday on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly to brief him on the Wednesday summit. But key Trump aides like National Security Advisor John Bolton and Defense Secretary James Mattis will likely remain cautious. In Wednesday's declaration, North Korea promised to permanently dismantle its missile test site and launch platform at Dong Chang Ri, something Kim had suggested when meeting with Trump on June 12, but Dong Chang Ri no longer means much to a North Korea that has already greatly improved its missile capabilities. Pyongyang declared last year that it had completed an intercontinental ballistic missile able to hit the continental U.S. It is expected to use mobile launchers and submarines in an actual strike. North Korea's willingness to dismantle the Pungiri nuclear complex, also mentioned in the declaration, is potentially more significant. The complex is the core of the regime's nuclear program, with facilities to extract plutonium and store nuclear fuel, as well as a research reactor. 60 to 70 percent of North Korea's nuclear facilities are concentrated in Yongbyon, a South Korean government official said. Dismantling a complex that continuously churns out nuclear materials would be incredibly meaningful. Still, North Korea said it would only take additional steps as the United States takes corresponding measures, without specifying what exactly that means. 
The country has been urging Washington to formally end the Korean War and hopes to eventually turn the existing armistice on the Korean Peninsula into a full-fledged peace treaty. The Pyongyang Declaration also did not mention any plans to dispose of North Korea's existing missiles and nuclear warheads, a necessary step toward complete denuclearization. Kim offered no comments on the nuclear issue at a post-meeting news conference, except that the two sides committed to efforts to turn the Korean peninsula into a land of peace free of nuclear weapons and the nuclear threat. Kim made no mention of a deadline for denuclearization, although two weeks earlier, he had first suggested to South Korean National Security Director Chung Yui Young that he wanted to complete the process before Trump's current term ends in January 2021. We had many discussions beyond what was included in the joint statement, Chung, who accompanied Moon to the North, told reporters. This suggests that more details were discussed at the actual meeting.